Hello coders! Before we dive into creating different programs in Java, I will show you first the setup on the GUI components that we will use. This will save tons of time because explaining everything over and over again is like explaining how to create a chair every time you wanted to sit. Yeah, it's a terrible metaphor but you get the point. Bakit? Nabamalay ko, basta isang araw bigla na lang may nagsabi sa akin na gusto raw niyang matutong gumawa ng mga walang kwentang bagay gaya ng mga ginagawa ko. Okay magkalala dahil mababaw lang naman ako mag-ingles. Ito ay yan. Lastly, for you to be able to feel proud of yourself, we will create a simple program at the end of the video. So make sure to watch until the end. I choose the bouncing animation just like the bouncing DVD logo because as the saying says, if you can bounce a ball in real life, just bounce a ball using programming. Unless you can. So, the first thing that we need to do is to create a Java project, name it bouncing ball, don't create module, then the Java class, name it bouncing ball again but this time without a space, then the public static void main, then its parameters. Good. Now, our playground is ready. So, once we have this Java class set up, we will now construct a constructor. Yes. If you don't know anything about OOP or object-oriented programming, a constructor is like a method without any data type, so it is neither a void, nor an int, nor any other data types. And its name is the same with the class name. Of course, you can modify its accessibility. You can make your constructor public, private, or protected, but let's just make it private, meaning this class has the only rights calling this constructor. Additional note, whenever you instantiate a class, the thing that you are calling is the class constructor. Later, you will see that. So, why are we using a constructor? I think it is better if I am to show you the difference. So, here is what it looks like if we do all of this in the main method. And this is how it looks like if we do all of this in the constructor. Yeah, the only difference is the amount of static keyword. And as our programmer says, messing with static variables is like messing with your mom. Yeah. Good. Now let's talk about GUI, GUI, or Graphical User Interface. GUI is like an interface but with graphics. You could display something on your screen and you could put something on that something until you feel your something with a bunch of something. And Java has a rich set of something rather components and J components. You could search for the differences between AWIT components and swing J components, but J components are better than components, so that's what we will use. And as you can see, I typed this unknown code because Java says so. I mean, by doing this, we are putting our program onto the ADT or the event dispatch thread. It is a must. Okay, Java or Oracle have said it, and by not following this, our program could behave differently and debugging it is kind of difficult. So, by putting it onto the EDT, that possibility of error is gone, just like my future. <laughs> the first thing that we want to set up is the JFrame. JFrame is a J component that gives us a container to contain other J components. So in Swing, JFrame could hold different Swing components like JLabel, JButton, JTextBox, JTextArea, JPanel, a JLabel and a JButton inside a JPanel, a JLabel and a JButton inside a JPanel that is inside another JPanel, and a JLabel and a JButton inside a JPanel that is inside another JPanel with a JLabel and a JButton inside a JPanel. Yes. There's a lot of J's there. So now, let's set up our JFrame. Let's first create a JFrame and in instantiating a JFrame, you could put some arguments here that would call the JFrame's constructor. So we will just put a string for the title of our JFrame. Next, let's set its resizability to false because I don't want to make our screen to be resizable. Then, let's set its default close operation or the thing that it does whenever we close our screen. Let's use the exit on close. 
exit and close is a static variable in JFrame. Then let's set its location relative to null. This puts our JFrame in the middle of our screen. Then lastly, let's set its visibility to true. Of course, for us to see it. Now, let's run it. Yes, you could see only a tiny thing floating here. And that is because we have not set its size yet. So, we have two ways. The first one is that we could set the size of our JFrame. And the second is that we could pull its content pane and change its size, then pack the JFrame. For now, let's just do the first one for us to see the screen. So, let's make a global variable for its width and height. Let's make the width equal to 1000, then let's do some math to follow the 16 by 9 ratio. Now, let's set the size with our dimension. And there you have it. Let's run our program and you will see the G frame. Good. Now, let's change the background color. Let's set it to black. Then run it, and voila, it's color white. You may be wondering, we set the background color to black, but why is it not black? Well, that is because the layer that is responsible for the background color is the content pane, and you can learn more about that in the Oracle's documentation. Of course, I have provided the link in the description. So now, let's grab its content pane. <laughs> oh, 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 no. What we will do is that we will create our own content pane and slap that into our JFrame. Now, the content pane of the JFrame happens to be a JPanel. Therefore, all we have to do is to create a JPanel. But what is a JPanel? JPanel is a J component for grouping different J components. So, as you have seen a while ago, it could group J label and a J button. And it could also group or contain another J panel inside it. So now, what is the deal with creating our own? Hmm. We will create our own content pane so that we could override its paint component method. This will make sense later. Don't worry. So, we have two choices again. First, we could instantiate an object for our J panel and override the method during instantiation. Or second, we could use inheritance and make the code a lot cleaner. And I think you know the path that we are heading to. So, inheritance is a concept in OOP wherein you get all the properties and methods of the parent class or the super class, unless they are private. The keyword for inheritance is extends, and just place it right next to your class name together with the super class. There you have it. Add the default serial key. Good. Now, let's change its preferred size and its background color. Then, set this class as a JFrames content pane. Then, revalidate it to make sure that everything is good. Then, lastly, pack the JFrame. Run it. Voila! Oops! Uh, wrong position. Damn! Never forget to properly arrange your code. Now, let's run it again. Whew. Now we have a good and simple screen. Now, let's override the paint component method and do some crazy codes to draw a circle. Yeah, that's how it is done. Define a diameter, set the color, then draw an oval, give its x, y, width, height, X and Y position is located at the center and the width and height is the same since it's a circle, duh. Oops. That's not the center, is it? Let's try that again. Nice. The graphics and the graphics 2D are basically the same, just like the component and J component. It just so happens that graphics 2D has a lot more to offer just like the J component, but for basic drawing, we could just use graphics library. But once we are to draw using precision or the floating values, that's the time that the graphics 2D will have its spotlight. Now, just like the old saying says, what's fun with graphics if it cannot go broom broom? Again, 
we have two ways. So, we could use either a timer or a swing worker. Now, the difference between these two is that timer runs on EDT, in which the swing components run, while the swing worker runs on a separate thread called swing worker thread. Yeah. <laughs> so, to make this video shorter, although it's already pretty long, we would skip the swing worker implementation and just go with the timer. So, all we have to do now is to create a global variable for my x and my y. I mean, my x and my y. Let's also put our diameter here and bring the default values here. Then, the x direction and the y direction. And we will change it inside the timer according to our logic if there's anywhere left. So if we want to move to the right, we will just set our x direction to 1. And if we want to move to the left, we will set it to negative 1. So later if we were to add the value of x tier to my x, it will continuously move right if we keep on increasing its value or by adding 1. And it will continuously move left if we keep on decreasing its value or adding negative 1. Same logic applies for y dear. 1 means down and negative 1 means up. This is just a simple logic. If the ball touches the left border or if the my x is equal to 0, we will set the x direction to right. And if it touches the right border or the my x plus diameter is equal to width, we will set the x direction to left. Same with y direction. If it touches the top border or the my y is equal to 0, we will set the y direction to down. And if it touches the bottom border or if the my y plus diameter is equal to height, we will set it to up. Let me explain that further. So the draw oval method draws an oval inside the quadrilateral. The quadrilateral has a dimension depending on the value of our width and height. And then the x and y is the position of the top left corner. Therefore, if we want to check whether it touches the right or the bottom border, we have to add the diameter to the my x and my y respectively. That basically checks whether the right side of the oval hits the right side border or the bottom side of the oval hits the bottom border. Then, add the x direction to my x and y direction to my y, then repaint it in every succession for the program to call the paint component method. And of course, draw our circle. Then finally, let's start the timer. And we're done. What? You want the changing colors just like the DVD logo? Okay, fine. So now, let's add a global variable for the color and let's make it white by default. And let's also add the method that will change the variable responsible for the color. We will call this method whenever we hit a border. We will also use the mat.random method here to generate random colors. Then call it whenever we hit the border. Okay, here it comes. Oh, where is it? Let's see, let's see. I knew it. 
math that random does not give us the value from 0 to 255. So, yeah, let's just use the random plus instead. Let's also add the condition in which it, it produces 0, 0, 0 RGB combination or the color black, we will change the color again because our background is already black. So, making the ball black does not make any sense, just like my life decisions. Now, let's run it. Here it comes. And there you have it. Now you know how to set up your GUI components and this is basically what we will use for the future videos in Code with Felix. So I changed the program a little bit and here is the result. The source code for this program is in the GitHub repository and don't worry, there are two source codes there, the one we wrote and the one I wrote. If you ever like this kind of video, consider subscribing and I will give you a deal. It's for free. What a great price. So as always, happy coding and see you on the next video, coders.